Hey guys, Patriot back with you one more time. This will be part three for the seven day wilderness backpack series. Tonight we're going to go ahead and weigh this pack. I don't actually know exactly what it weighs in its current configuration. I've changed out a couple of small items. I do know it's under 50 pounds and that 50 pound was a goal of mine. It kind of might sound like an arbitrary number, but uh, in actuality it's based off of uh, what I'm comfortable carrying. Um, that's not to say that I couldn't put a 75 pound pack on my back. I just don't think that that's conducive to moving real quickly and moving safely. Uh, when I get, a, get more than 50 pounds uh, on my back and with the clothing that I'm wearing, I just don't feel as sure-footed. I feel a little bit slower. I feel a little, a little bit more clumsy. I notice that uh, if I have to run with a 40 or 50 pound pack, not run, but uh, kind of do the fast jog thing. I can actually get away with that. I can actually bomb down a hill pretty good if I'm careful. Uh, I've been <laughs> blessed to have been pretty sure-footed my whole life and uh, a little bit athletic. And uh, I, it, as long as I keep my fitness level up, uh, which I've been trying to do even more of lately, and there's because I've been doing more hiking lately, the weather's starting to cool down a bit and I'm able to do more. Um, as long as I keep, keep that fitness level up with mountain biking and I even do a little bit of longboarding on a skateboard and, uh, and some jogging at night, uh, I notice that uh, I, can, I can carry 50 pounds pretty comfortably. Um, I don't know uh, that I would want to have a multi-day mission, <laughs> they say mission jokingly, uh, I don't know if I would want to have a, a multi-day uh, adventure with carrying more than 50 pounds on my back. I mean, anything's possible, I guess, to a point, but uh, I'll be honest with you, it, it takes a lot of the fun away from it. Now, this whole project isn't just based on having fun. Obviously, a seven-day wilderness backpack uh, series is going to cross over into some other areas. Sure, there's a, a survival uh, type of mentality that goes along with this. Uh, some people like to call it bug out packs and so forth. but. 50 pounds is what I have picked. It was my goal to stay under that. Now I could go up to 50 pounds, but I figure every pound that I'm under 50 is just a bonus for me. Now there's a lot of uh, bug out uh, style videos out there. Um, you know, I, I noticed that they can get really uh, extensive as far as their capabilities. And I think that uh, the plan of a lot of people, and again, you'll, I, I address the bug out concept very uh, briefly in part one, I believe. Um, it's not something, I think that if, you, if we're going to talk about bug out bags, I've got a moth in here, if we're going to talk about bug out bags, you really have to, I mean, at least I would like to really define what I think that is and the parameters in which it would be used. For me, uh, I like to stay away from calling it that, which you notice I, I have. But I think that a lot of people uh, build what I would refer to as a camp kit. Okay, they, they build up a system. They think that they're going to walk from their house to somewhere or their vehicle to somewhere or from uh, some type of uh, motor vehicle to somewhere. And then they're going to hold up and they're going to hold up uh, and uh, hunt their hunt their own food and they're going to filter their own water next to a stream and, and hold up. Okay, so, so that's fine. Uh, I, I have no, no problem with that. Uh, if somebody wants to kind of build around that, um, I have an opinion about it, but I won't get into that right now. My system, uh, and I'm not saying that it's better than anyone else's, but the system that I built is predicated on the fact that uh, uh, I want rapid mobility. I want to move. I want to be able to cover territory. Uh, and put miles uh, on my on my boots, and so that's what this uh, pack I've outfitted to do, and that's why the the 50 pound number that sounds arbitrary, but it's actually based off of what I carry, and uh, I I can actually do that and not be just completely wasted the next day as far as the strain that it's going to put on your shoulders and your back and your your knees and your feet. Uh, so we're going to cover my clothing system as well. That'll be in a, la a later video. So um, okay, so we got the talking out out of the way right up front. Let's go ahead and go through this. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing hung up first, and we'll see what it weighs. I'm going to have 
to zoom in a little bit there. Okay, right right now, guys, it looks like I'm showing 44.73. Hold it, 44.73. It's actually a little bit less than what I thought it was going to be, but uh, I just remembered that I took something out of there, and uh, we're going to talk about that too. It's kind of funny, just as I pick that up to weigh it, I, I feel like right now when I pick this up and move it around, it feels so light to me. But uh, after a day out there in the hills, walking the trails, it's like, gosh, this thing's heavy. You get it off your back and, you know, your biceps don't even have enough to let it to the ground. It's just uh, it's just the, how it works, uh, which, again, kind of goes back into that number that I picked at 50 pounds. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing taken apart here. Man, this is going to make for some funny blooper reels. I'll tell you that right now. I just about tripped on this scale leg sticking out here and buried it into the wall. <laughs> Anyhow, I keep remembering things that I want to cover before I start taking stuff out. As I take stuff out, the bug out crowd and probably the military crowd that's been out there humping hills in Afghanistan is going to say, that's it? That's what's in your bag? That's your seven-day kit? Well, yeah, guys. Um, we all get to... A, a level or a comfort level that we're satisfied with and anything else just becomes a burden and so I've picked items in here that I think still allow me to cover a full spectrum of scenarios uh, but allow me to still move very quickly and to cover a lot of miles a day if I if I want to to the lightweight backpacker or I should say ultra lightweight backpacker this thing is going to seem like uh, like a tank, you know. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy, but I think that when they start seeing some of what's in here, they'll understand that this is a difference between a long-term wilderness kit and a seven-day fun hike or even a multi-day fun hike. So uh, that's the difference that you're going to see here. And again, later videos will delve into that a bit more. So much for having the talking out of the way, right? Sorry about that. Okay guys, uh, I'm going to start with the outside pockets. The reason why is because if I empty the inside, everything is just going to pile in on itself. So we'll keep the uh, rigidity of the ins inside. We'll just start going through the pockets. All right, outside pocket one. I'm going to move through these pretty quickly. Uh, keep in mind that right, the rig you're looking at here is a three season rig right now. This is not a forest winter. You know, we have uh, altitudes all the way up to uh, over 12,000 feet, 12.7 I think here. This isn't a winter uh, high altitude setup right now. This is a three season setup, which includes summer desert, which is very extreme. So, all right, we've got uh, some Gorilla gloves in here. I actually wanted to do a short video on these. These are really inexpensive, and I picked them up at Home Depot, and they hardly weigh anything, and they're real tough. I've used these uh, cleaning swimming pools before, and they lasted really well. All right, next thing I've got is a Benchmade rant. Um, I didn't want to give up a full-size fixed blade knife. You see this has serrations, which is not my favorite, but I wanted to take it up a level from, um, say, a, uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say a bushcraft knife. What I mean is a mora. I wanted to take it up a level from a mora, have a little bit more durability there. And I didn't want to go with something as heavy as some of the other choices. Okay, I've got a SOG folding saw. These three tools, you'll, well, the, two so far. These tools are very important for me uh, when I'm out. Um, I, I use them a lot uh, when I go out. So this is a uh, SOG folding saw. This is my second one. My newest or my oldest one sits in the toolbox of my vehicle right now. But this thing seems to be pretty bulletproof. It's got a little bit thicker blade than some of the uh, less expensive saws. Well, it wasn't real expensive. I should say cheap, cheaper made saws. Uh, so it's a little bit weighty, but it does a really good job. Okay, my third main tool that I have in here is a full-size multiplier. Uh, this one is a Gerber Fisherman with the needle nose uh, jaws on it. Uh, the reason I picked this, it was a little bit lighter than the SOG tool that I had and uh, lighter than my other Leatherman tool and it gives, gives me a little bit of flexibility there with the uh, with the uh, extended jaws. Um, sometimes it's something I can use out there. It does have a pretty good file on it and I don't think I've ever reviewed this tool, but I've had it a long time. Which is the other reason that I decided to pick it, because 
I've put a lot of pressure on these jaws before and I've never broken them. Um, my brother broke a, a Gerber multi-tool taking off a plastic uh, zip tie before and so I, I gave this a good workout before I decided to throw it in here. So, And I've owned it a long time. Okay guys, I've got some cordage. This is just some uh, county com cordage here. I've got about uh, 75 feet and you can see I've got about uh, 45, 50 feet of paracord here. So that's my two main pieces of cordage right there. Okay, I didn't really want to take this out individually. I've got a survival mirror. I've got some shock cord. I do like a, a real spoon and a real fork, and so I'm carrying separates versus single or a spork. Uh, this, these are some lithium AA batteries. Besides what's in my flashlights, that's uh, that's all I carry. Here's some waxed sewing um, twine for uh, heavy duty tarps, tents, stuff like that. And there's quite a bit there. There's either 50 or 100 feet. I can't remember. There's a lot there. Okay, I've got some duct tape, Ranger banded on there with some tin foil and several needles, and this is just a general repair kit. Spare oil rings for the flashlight. I've got some writing paper, just some sticky notes, and a pen, just a simple lightweight pen. These are important to me. You'll see one of these in almost every kit. I mean. Just the other day, I, I had a toenail that ended up bugging me a little bit, and without something like this, holy cow, uh, it's one of those things that it's hard to do that job with anything else. Uh, you can do it with a knife, but you risk injury uh, as well. And this is just my little DMT uh, diamond knife, knife sharpener here. This has been in a lot of different kits, but I picked it and threw it this one because of uh, I'm going for that lightweight. All right, next I've got a small pocket. Here's the, the main front pocket. Here's the smaller one right here. And uh, this is a fire kit. In here I've got some dryer lint. I've got some uh, REI lifeboat style matches. I've got uh, quite a bit of uh, wet fire in here, which I really like. It's small and it's lightweight. It carries really well. It's a little bit smaller and lighter than uh, Esbit fuel. Um, let's see, I have a small tin in there, kind of like an Altoids tin. It's actually a Victorinox. Um, I forgot the name of the small one, but that's what came in that. And I've got char cloth in there. And I've also, the, w the reason that it's black is because I've cooked char cloth in here and it has a small hole in the top. So I've got a great little tin out there for uh, making char cloth. And um, as you'll see, the water container that I previously could have done that in, I got rid of for weight. So um, I like to be able to make char cloth. There's also a ferrocium rod and a striker tool inside of this little kit right here. Alright, next. I've got my uh, Bible verses here. I've got about 150 that uh, uh, that I really like or are meaningful to me or ones that I'm trying to memorize, that sort of thing. Uh, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, uh, you know that I'm a Christian and I'm unapologetic about it. So uh, we all have a worldview. Uh, my worldview is Christianity. Alright, and I've got a um, head net in here. Super lightweight. This is things like a quarter of an ounce. Uh, I was thinking about carrying two and using it for a, a stuff sack, but it doesn't have enough rigidity to use as a, uh, as a stuff sack, so I uh, just went with one, but they seem to be really tough. This is one that I've had a long time that's been on a lot of hunting trips with me. Okay, and I've got one of these things called a cool tie. Uh, I've got a couple of these that I've used over the years and used to uh, clean swimming pools with these and I uh, do a lot of hiking with them in the summertime. It's got those expandable gel beads in here and so you wet this down, those beads expand and hold water in them and you can put this around your neck, tie it off and uh, you've got some nice uh, evaporation, evaporative effect I should say over your, uh, your arteries and your neck. All right, next thing I've got in here, guys, is my Sawyer water filter. This is the Sawyer Squeeze water filter system. There's a couple other things in here that uh, didn't come with it, but I'll show you everything that's in the bag that's visible. Uh, so 
this system has received a little bit of ridicule, but uh, as I start to talk about this and tell you how good it works, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. And uh, you'll see that I, I have a lot of filters that I've used over the years. This is a great system. I've got a 64 ounce bladder here, and a 32. Those would be for the contaminated water. And those bags hook to the bottom of this little guy right here. Uh, this thing is, um, I've never clogged it and I've run quite a bit of uh, water through it, including some cow tank water. <laughs> and, uh, and it works really good. Uh, filters down to point, uh, point 0.1 microns. So it's a very good filter. It filters uh, smaller than my Pure Hiker. So a great little system here. I've added a few components to it, like this platypus carbon filter and another little attachment that I can use for various things, including a straw method. Uh, it just gives me some more options without adding a lot of weight. So that's what's going on there. And I, I know, guys, I'm going through this stuff, but I'm going to be showing this to you and doing a full review on this. And uh, I've got video that I've been taking with this out in the field, and gosh, it really works good. Best thing is, this entire kit, the way that I pulled it out of here, weighs 0.4 pounds. So it's very light. I have, I believe, 32 tablets here. These are Aquamira, or no, actually they're uh, potable uh, aqua, <laughs> chlorine dioxide. And uh, this is just a backup uh, system. In case anything happens, uh, I do have a way of not purifying water, but treating water uh, so that it's drinkable. So I do have 32 in here. All right, done with that. I want to talk about that too, but we'll have to come back to it. All right, this, this thing here, this is just a, a little portable day hike uh, backpack. It's a really cheap. This is the Outdoor Products. I think that's a Walmart brand. Uh, so this thing was, I, I think it was inexpensive. I think it was $5 or something. It's got, a, uh, it's got a draw cord here to cinch things up. I've removed all the extra weight from this, and I've put uh, Spectra kite line on here, 150 pound kite line uh, for my ties. They're more visible and they're a lot lighter than the big toggles that were on here before. So this thing, this thing hardly weighs anything, um, ounce and a half maybe. But it's great uh, once you've picked out uh, a bit, uh, not a base camp, but your overnight stay, wherever you're going to stay, you can leave the heavy pack behind. If it's safe, obviously you might be hiding it. But uh, if you need to go get water or you need to go set your traps, if that's what you're doing, uh, you can take this along with you. You can carry some ammunition uh, or uh, whatever else you might be uh, toting along with you that you definitely don't want to leave. That would include a, a small survival type kit with the bare minimums in it. There I go reviewing gear again. Uh, I guess I probably am not going to come back to that, so that's why I talked about it a little bit. Okay, here's my bathroom kit. There's actually something missing in here. I just remembered, but um, it has a sunblock in it. This is a whole roll of, I think it's 50 yards of dental floss, but that's multi-purpose. Uh, you can use that for stitching, and uh, well, it's got a lot of uses. I won't go into them. I've got some Neosporin in there. I've got these little Listerine uh, strips. I actually took two packs apart and put all the strips in here. And I have some citronella peppermint soap in here. You can use that for hair. You can use that for uh, body soap. You can even brush your teeth with it. But I prefer, and the thing that, I, that isn't in here, I prefer a little baking soda and salt. Uh, it just uh, seems to clean really good and finish it with a little Listerine strip and it works really well. I've got 100% DEET in here and a small toothbrush. Uh, I guess I should weigh that. Before I weigh it, I also forgot to tell you that there was some of this Body Glide in here, this anti-chafe cream. I use that uh, when I'm mountain biking. It can also work as kind of a, a deodorant as well because it tends to stop perspiration. Uh, but I got this in a little uh, three-pack kit and this is more than enough for a week's worth. Works for your feet uh, really well too and helps to prevent blisters. You can see how small that kit is. Oops. Wait for this thing to turn on. Okay, here we go. Weight of the uh, plastic bag as well, but 0.35 pounds. So just over a third of a, of a pound there. 